Good morning. Dear brothers and sisters, today's three readings speak about prophets and prophecies. Ezekiel in the first reading, Saint Paul in the second, and the Lord in our gospel. There are three important points to recall about biblical prophets. The first is that we tend to think of a prophet as someone who only predicts the future. We're always interested in what is going to happen, aren't we? There is interest in horoscopes, psychic readings, and there are many people around us who claim to have the gift to do it, most likely for money. Brothers and sisters, forecasting the future was not the only role of prophets in the Bible. Their calling was to be God's agents, representatives, ambassadors, to be the mouth of God, to speak on his behalf. About what? About the nation, the, also with the specific individuals and the smaller communities they encountered. Brothers and sisters, the prophet is given the gift to be attuned to the evils that others ignore. The prophet is given the unpopular mission of alerting people to the spiritual sicknesses that is growing among them. And the prophet is responsible before God to call the community and the individuals to a change of heart. Brothers and sisters, prophets always spoke about the abuse of the poor by the rich, about the moral concerns that were eating away at the nation as a result of disregarding the Ten Commandments, condemning the social cultural trends that were destroying the covenants already made between God and his people. They spoke about the blasphemy that uh, occurred when religion became just window dressing rather than a serious commitment affecting all aspects of our life. They clearly spoke of the impending disasters if all this social immorality carelessly kept going on. That's what prophets did and that's what prophets do these days. Prophets, prophets are, let me call them moral doctors. A doctor doesn't tell us the future, however, he tells us the truth that has a future. Keep on smoking and X will happen. In the same way, the prophets were the ones who offered the diagnostics about Israel's people's souls. The second fact, brothers and sisters, about prophets is that there were two kinds of prophets. There are always two kinds of them. There were, there are professional prophets who delivered their spiritual diagnosis of, for a living much like the political commentators we see on television today. And then there were the biblical, the real one, prophets who were individually selected and called by God to speak on his behalf. They were inspired by the Holy Spirit. They were given a permanent and urgent message for Israel. And thirdly, prophets were very unpopular, disliked and avoided, persecuted by the people who did not want to understand, to change their hearts or their ways of thinking and acting. Prophets made them uncomfortable. Prophets criticized and pointed at the ways things were in reality, which never makes a person popular. We want to be popular and admired, uh, praised and liked, supported, noticed, appointed, thanked, counted on and loved. We never like or want to be corrected or told the truth about ourselves, plainly and directly. We take offense, like today's in the Gospel, people against the Lord, 
we take offense at it even when we know we are being told the truth we need to acknowledge. Dear brothers and sisters, in today's first reading, the prophet Ezekiel is told that he will face the rejection of the message by those unwilling to listen and to change their hearts. Ezekiel's mission was to speak the truth despite apathy and resistance. That's very important in the mission of the prophet also these days. We have to be resistant, resilient. We need to keep on telling the truth. No matter what, no matter the persecution, no matter the consequences, no matter if we are not promoted, elevated, repay, acknowledged, admired, we need to keep telling the truth. Because you and I, as a little Roman in a few minutes, we will, we were, he will be consecrated as a prophet, a king and a priest, remember? The day of our baptism we were proclaimed to have been consecrated, no more, no less, as prophets, resilient people, people who tell the truth to power. In today's second reading, St. Paul speaks about uh, his mission of preaching God's word despite the thorn in the flesh. He's speaking about something either physical or spiritual that seriously debilitated him. Maybe we do have a thorn in the flesh, which is not necessarily a physical condition, but rather certain people or events in our lives. St. Paul teaches us that we don't have to be perfect, to be instruments of God, to be prophets, but the people willing to be masterfully used by God himself. God does not invite us to follow him, to be his prophets, because of what we have, but rather for what he is going to give us if we allow him to make unconditional use of us. And finally, in today's Gospel reading, Jesus is rejected by his own people in his hometown, but he didn't stop and went forward. If people close their ears and will not listen to us, brothers and sisters, that doesn't mean that nobody will listen to us. We should not give up speaking the truth even when people try to make us think they don't understand or don't need the message. Our vocation is to be prophets, whether people like it or not. Being baptized has consequences. We no longer behave like people who don't know God. And we are chosen to be the light, to be the salt, to be the guide to be the GPS, to set the direction for others. What if it's secure, we are not very successful? Some say that after 2,000 years, the whole world should be Catholic. The internet seems to spread faster than the gospel, but the internet, Facebook, TikTok, or whatever, or any other means of social networking doesn't require a change of heart and mind a conversion moment or a change in our lifestyle. It is easy to be in the media. All you have to do is to sign up, sign on, and there you are. No efforts, no virtue, no truth, no nothing. All the social media requires from us is to be one more among the millions and do nothing else in order to be better persons or to spread love, mercy, faith, truth, real deep relationships, real love. We cannot wait for our life to be perfect, brothers and sisters, before we speak and try to live the truth of God 
if we wait for our life to be perfect, we will wait forever and never be the prophets in action that we are called to be by our baptism. We are not called to be problem free. We are not called, not even priests or popes or bishops or nuns or no one baptized member of the church has been called to be problem free, but to be willing to work on those problems and let God see our efforts and bless us with the grace of conversion and change. We are only called, brothers and sisters, to be faithful, to be truthful to our baptism, to God and to each other. In the name of the Father and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Just now baptize little Roman. I invite Roman and his family to come forward to the baptismal font. You all can join us as well. And if there are any children who would like to come forward and uh, be able to see the baptism from a little closer point of view, I welcome them as well. <clears throat> We stand and turn to all the saints of heaven and ask for their support and prayers as we sing the litany of the saints. <laughs> 